Hey guys, welcome back to another video on my channel, and we are a default skin. That means one thing, and that means we've got a new mod releasing. Now this is releasing with 1.21. Now the mod will have released by the time you're seeing this video. It has been published and all that. If it hasn't released just yet, then we're just waiting for CurseForge to accept it. So now this mod is called Tricky Trials Plus, and it expands on the Minecraft 1.21 update, adding some features that the game could have done with, but also some features that we thought the game needed. Before we jump into to what's been added in this update i do quickly just want to say a huge thanks to centauri and also the blocky goat now they have helped with this mod and they will also be hopefully helping with future updates as well they are both really good and i will have some links in the description so you can check them out but let's now jump to the first feature and because we're in the desert we're going to cover something that spawns within the desert and this is a new wolf variant it will naturally spawn here but i can't currently find any so we're going to spawn it with a spawn egg and this is what it looks like. It spawns in patches of two to four. It works just like every other wolf variant in the game where you can tame it, put wolf armor on it, dye its collar. And there is a second wolf variant that spawns in the mushroom fields. Now this one spawns in pack sizes of one. So you only ever find one of these on their own. And this is the skeleton wolf, which you can see right there. It works the same as the other wolves. It is literally just a retexture. So that's now 11 wolf variants inside the game, including these two. So the first mob spawns in a new structure that spawns in oceans. Now there are two types of this structure. One where all staircases leading into it are blocked off. So you have to only find it by digging in. But there is also a variant where you can find the staircases peeking above the sand. So sometimes it can be completely hidden, sometimes it might not be. But this one is actually exposed to the surface thanks to this ravine generating here. Now we can head into this and it's completely flooded. And as you'll notice, there is a block in the center which is a spawner. It's made purely out of prismarine and the new mob that spawns here. If we quickly just get one to spawn as they'll spawn always from this spawner. And this is the Bubsy. The Bubsy is a new variant to the element mobs, so adding to the breeze and also the blaze. Now the Bubsy is a aquatic mob, which when you are inside a survival mode, they will shoot projectiles at you, and these projectiles are water charges. But once they shoot them, they will try to run, as they don't like to stay around you after shooting you. Now their aim isn't the best. Now if their projectile does hit you, let's quickly just give ourselves water breathing so we don't die. And let's quickly just get close up to one so it hits me. There we go. If you get hit by a water charge, you will have a riptide effect where you get pulled in the direction you are looking. When fighting these, it makes it difficult to fight them because you get moved around in all different directions. But if you was to kill one of these, they will drop a Bubsy Rod, which you can then throw in a crafting table to get your own water charges. So you can use these to have mobs be pushed away from you, or you can have them look at you and have them pulled towards you. So now we've covered the Bubsy, let's cover the next mob, and that can be found in deep state layers in basically any overworld biome and here it is this is the blitz dungeon the blitz dungeon is just like a small little mine shaft which has a spawner now them diamonds are not always there that is just luck that we've had a diamond or generation and this spawner will spawn the blitz mob which if we wait a second one should spawn now what does the blitz do well the blitz is the earth element so that is now all four elements added to the game if you get hit by a earth charge you'll be stunned meaning that you cannot break blocks nor can you move or jump you can still hit entities though. And the blitz will basically just skate around until you kill them. When you kill these, they will drop some earth charges. They don't drop a rod because they have the earth charges spinning around them already. And these earth charges can be used to stun mobs. Although they can't be used to stun a blitz because they do throw back the projectiles. And with that comes a new advancement. And that's master of the elements. And that's for basically obtaining all four charges. The wind charge, the water charge, the earth charge and the fire charge. Now the next feature inside this update is more vaults. We have added four new vault variants to the game. And these will spawn in structures which which I'll reveal in a second, but it will be quite obvious where they spawn. The first one we have is the Woodland Vault. Now these work exactly like the Vanilla Vaults. They just have custom keys and loot tables, but they are a separate block, just so we could add custom textures to them. The second one is the End City Vault. Now I will show where these spawn in the structures as well. I just want to show them out in an open area. Third one is the Ancient City Vault. 
And the fourth one is the Bastion Vault. Now the keys for these, the Woodland Key can be gotten from a 50% chance from a Evoker. That does also mean Evokers no longer drop Totems of Undying, because Totems of Undying are now obtained from the Vault. Their City Key for the End City is gotten from killing the Dragon. The key for the Ancient City Vault is gotten 100% chance from the Warden when you kill it. And finally, the Bastion Key is 25% chance from a Piglet. Now, let me quickly just explain why we have made the keys drop in this way. We could have added trial spawners to all these structures, but it doesn't make sense just to plop a spawner that will then drop the keys. And we wanted the keys to be renewable. So no matter where you get them from, you can always re-get them in the future if you wanted to. And that is exactly what we've done. Evokers can be found inside of raids, which can be farmed or regenerated whenever you want. Ender dragons can be respawned within crystals. Wardens can be spawned at any point in the game, and Piglings spawn in Crimson Forests. So that means all the keys are renewable in some way. Some are harder to obtain than others, but the loot does make up for that. So the Woodland one gives you an achievement for unlocking life, and you'll get a guaranteed Totem of Undying, and then some random items as well. Now, each one of these vaults has a guaranteed item, and the item that is guaranteed is quite good. In this case, it's the Totem, in the end city one, you get the final unlock, and the guaranteed item here is the elytra. And then you also get two random items from each of these. I'm going to leave this one for now, because this does also have a new item that I don't want to leak just yet. The bastion one is golden wonders, and the guaranteed item here is the neverite smithing template. And then you do also get two random items. And then finally, this is going to leak an item. For unlocking this one, you get releasing souls. And if we open this up, you can see you get a guaranteed that block, and we'll cover that in a second. And you'd also get two random items, which you've also seen another item. Now, the one with a totem face obviously spawns in Woodland Mansion, and each individual room, some rooms have a chance to spawn them, some rooms do not. Now, I can't exactly remember what rooms because this part was done a very long time ago, but you can see this one does have one. And if I open it up with the key, you can see it will give us some random items. Now, the Ancient City one is going to be a little bit easier to cover. And that is because there are three different types of center parts. This one right here, it is in the front of the city. The other two, you'll find it just at the back in the center. Now, the Bastion one depends on the type of Bastion. Inside of the treasure room, it's found in one of these rooms with the chests. And you only ever find one of these per Bastion as well. And the final vault spawns in the end ship. If we quickly just head inside of here, you can see it replaces where the elytra used to spawn. So first of all, let's cover this block. This is the painting table, and it's crafted with two planks and two wall. And what does it do? Well, you put a painting inside of it. This is a painting with no variant, so the random one. And you can pick what painting you want to pull out. Now, the painting you take, when you place this painting down, it will always be that painting. It won't be random. So this painting table basically makes it so you can pick any painting that you want. You don't have to stand there for 10, 20 minutes or an hour, randomly placing them until you get the painting you like. Now the next thing, dreaming bottles. This bottle comes from level one up to level five. And for every level, you get 15 minutes when drinking it. So from drinking the max level, you get an hour and 15 minutes. Now when you drink this bottle, it will be consumed and you get a new potion effect called Dreaming. Now, what does Dreaming do? Well, it stops phantoms from spawning around you. Now, two things to note. If you already have phantoms around you, they will still be there until they die or despawn. But next time the game tries to spawn phantoms, none will spawn if you have this potion effect. And also another thing to note, if you're in multiplayer and you have the potion effect, but your friend doesn't and your friend is near you, phantoms can still spawn above your friend. But this is good if you, for example, want to build during the night time. You can drink one of these and then you won't be able to spawn any phantoms for the night time, or at least for as long as the effect lasts, which the most is an hour and 15 minutes. And these can be found in any of the modded vaults. Now let's cover the item we got from the ancient city vault. This is the sonic core. It works like the heavy core where you can place it down, it doesn't have orientation or anything, and the block is purely decorative. But just like the heavy core, it can be thrown in a crafting table with an echo shard, 
to make a new weapon called the Echo Flail. Now, what does the Echo Flail do? Well, it gives you one extra attack range, so you'll be able to attack entities one block further away than you would be able to with any sword or axe. So let's just get a load of husks in this hole, and let's now break that. So currently there is about 90 entities here. Now, if I quickly just grab the flail and I was to hit these entities, you can see it hits every single one of them. And that is basically because it hits every entity within a range of you. And that range is about five blocks around you. Now, because it's quite overpowered and you can hit an uh, unlimited amount of mobs, if you had, for example, 1,000 mobs, you'd still be able to hit all 1,000 of them. It doesn't do much attack damage. The attack damage is by default four. Now, there are currently no enchantments for the Echo Flail, and they'll be coming in the next update. Now, before we cover the two biggest features inside of this first update, we did add tough tiles. These come in the block form, then slab stairs and walls. These can be crafted just from four tough bricks inside of crafting table. They can also be crafted in a stone cutter. And these are purely decorative. So let's cover the first feature. And this you have to head to the trial chambers for. And here we go. This is a new room you can find inside of the trial chamber. And it includes a boss. This is the trial knight. It's made up of heavy cores and copper. Now the boss isn't that easy to kill. When you go in survival mode, if you go near it, it will chase you. And when it hits you, it will punch you and deal quite a lot of knockback. Which if we quickly just check, there we go. And it will also, if it can't catch you, randomly shoot heavy cores at you. Now, if the heavy core hits you, it does deal a lot of damage. I think it deals about five hearts. Now, that health does also lower with armor. So, if you're wearing armor enchantments, ouch, that was like two and a half hearts. But when the heavy cores hit you, it does also disable your shield. Now, currently fighting this, if we quickly just kill the boss, let's quickly just hit it with our sword. The boss has 300 health, so let's quickly just kill it to get rid of all that health. And there we go. When it dies, it will drop a singular heavy core. Now, the drops it has might be changed in the future and it might also be added to this is just another way to currently obtain the heavy core if you don't like the idea of fighting the ominous trial but once again this room isn't guaranteed in every trial chamber now before we jump to the second biggest thing in this update there are two new block sets and these block sets are used for the next biggest thing so we have titanium. Titanium comes in every single type that copper does, and it's basically just a lighter copper. Now it comes obviously in the blocks, chiseled grates, the cut versions, doors, trapdoors, and also a bulb. The bulb works out like the copper bulb. And then the second block set is ominous slate. And ominous slate comes in every single type that tough does. So you have the normal versions, you have the chiseled, you have the polished, you have the bricks, and then you have the chiseled bricks. Now these are purely decorative and have no other use apart from decoration. They spawn in a new structure called the Ominous Trial Chamber. And this is a version of the Trial Chamber that is a lot more ominous. Now why is it more ominous? Well, let's quickly just show you. It spawns exactly like the Trial Chamber does, but with different blocks and some minor adjustments. Now this structure will be adjusted as well in the future, adding more rooms, more variations and things like that. Now you're probably asking, why would you want to come here rather than the trial chamber? And that is because the mobs that spawn here are a lot harder. Now inside of a normal trial chamber, with the ominous, they spawn with a default chain mail or iron armor on the rare occasion diamond. Now inside of this one, they spawn with netherite armor with pretty much maxed out enchantments. And with the ominous state enabled, they will spawn with 100 health. So let's just use this one as an example. This is Stray. Now if I activate this spawner, you'll see this one has spawned with netherite helmet and boots. There is also a chance they can spawn with chest piece or leggings. Here we go, this one has spawned with them right here. But they will have quite a lot of enchantments on them. Now these have the default health that a stray does. But if I was to activate this with Trial Omen, so let's quickly just do that, there we go. These strays will have 100 health as well as Neverite armor and enchantments. Now it may be very difficult and that is the plan. Now if we need to make it a little bit easier in future then we will. But we just wanted to test how hard it should be. We don't want it to be like slightly harder than a trial chamber because then there was no point adding it. We wanted it to be a lot harder. Now it's an end game structure. The structure can only be found in rare biomes like Badlands, Grove, 
old growth biomes and things like that. Now you may be wondering, what about mobs that can't have armor? Well, they have been replaced. For example, one right here, the Vindicator. Now the mobs that have been replaced are spiders, cave spiders, silverfish and slimes. And they have been replaced with Vindicators, Evokers, Hoglings and Pigling Brutes with the zombification tag false so they will not zombify. Now this video is obviously just me showcasing the structure. I will have a video later this week of me trying to beat this trial chamber. So if you want to see me fail a lot then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that as i really want to try it in survival mode as we obviously have done a lot of testing of the structure to make sure it does work and that but trying to beat the whole structure is not something that has been done yet if you beat the structure in legit survival mode with little to no deaths then send me a screenshot on discord and we might add an easter egg in the next update for you but that's all to say about this structure it's just a lot harder now breezes that is one mob that hasn't been changed but they will just spawn with more health just to make them a little bit harder to kill it's not meant to be something you jump into with iron armor you're meant to wait until you have at least maybe max diamond or max netherite with totems, potions and things like that. But anyway, that is where I'm going to end this video. That is everything in update one. Let me know what you guys thought of this update. And also, if you have any suggestions or you find any bugs, the best place to leave them is in my Discord, which will be linked in the description. But subscribe so you don't miss me running through this structure or so you don't miss future updates to the mod. Once again, a huge thanks to Centauri and the Blocky Goat. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.